you've probably noticed that there's a lot of IB questions that ask you to solve for ratios. And all of these questions can be done using the same technique that I'm going to show you today. And often these questions can be done without even knowing the physics. And for that reason, this might be the most practical video that I've ever made. So I've just gone to the IB Physics data booklet and I've randomly chosen a few pages just to give you a big sampling of formulas in the data booklet. And what I'd like you to notice is that if I pick any of these formulas out, let's suppose I pick out this one from astrophysics, b equals l over 4 pi d squared, then you'll notice that we've got a quantity equal to, say, constants, and then you could have things multiplied or divided, and those things might be raised to powers. So that's what pretty much every equation is, just multiplication and division, and perhaps raising to powers. And a lot of the questions that you do are based on these formulas, and they'll ask you for, say, the, the, a ratio, like B1 to B2. In this case here, B stands for the brightness of a star. So this might be the ratio of the brightness of one star compared to the brightness of another star. Or you might be asked something like, by what factor will the kinetic energy of an object change if the momentum is doubled, if P here is doubled? So those are the type of questions, and they're very, very common IB questions, especially in astrophysics. These are the type of questions that this technique will apply to, and you'll find it a very straightforward application, and these will be questions that you look forward to doing because they're easy for you. So what do I mean by ratio proportionality equations and why are they important? Consider any two variables that are proportional to one another. Say y is proportional to x. Then of course we can write that as an equation. y must equal some constant times x. And that is to say that y over x is always going to have the same value. And graphically what that's going to look like is a straight line through the origin such that I can take any two points on the line, x1, y1 for one point, and let's take x2, y2 as the other point. Then that ratio of y to x is going to be the same for every single point on the line. That is that y1 over x1 will be equal to y2 over x2. And then I can cross multiply and write that a different way. That is that y1 over y2 must be equal to x1 over x2. And if I wanted to now, I could exchange those subscripts, of course. I could make it y2 over y1 equals x2 over x1. Now, most of the equations in physics aren't just some variable equals a constant times another variable. They're usually more complex than that. So we might have an equation like z equals 3 pi x squared y cubed all over b square rooted. That is to say that z must be proportional to x squared y cubed all over b, well b is square root, I'll write that as b to the one half. And of course I don't have to worry about the 3 pi because that's just a constant. And I wouldn't have to worry about any of the other variables if I knew they were constant in the problem. So what I can do now, and I'm not going to prove this, but I'll let you justify it for yourself, but I think in a sense it's self-evident. If I've got, and we'll call them states of a system, before we had points on the line, well, we don't have lines anymore. We've got these formulas. But we can talk about states of the system. In other words, there would be a state of the system. Some value z1 would equal 3 pi times some value x1 squared times some value y1 cubed all over the square root of some b1. And that would denote kind of a unique state of the system that satisfied that relationship. What I can write here is that z1 over z2 will be equal to x1 over x2 squared, y1 
over y2, all cubed, all divided by b1, all over b2, all to the power 1 half. So I might simplify that a bit. Invert and multiply that denominator so I'd get x1 over x2 squared times y1 over y2 cubed times b2 over b1 to the 1 half. So what I'm going to be able to do here is determine, say, the ratio z1 over z2. If I know the ratios of x1 to x2, y1 to y2, and b2 to b1. And that's a common type of question where you'll be asked to find a ratio of quantities when you're comparing two different states of some sort of physical system. Here's a typical question where a ratio proportionality equation makes the question really easy. Pause the video, read the question over, give it a try, and then come back and, and see how it's done with the ratio proportionality. So we're looking for this ratio of A at P compared to A at Q. We definitely want to see a relationship between acceleration and the radius here. So when we go to the data book, right, we get these equations here. And if you think about it for a little bit, the period here, it's got to be the same for both P and Q. It doesn't change. So that's going to be a better equation to use. That is A equals 4 pi squared R all over T squared is better to use. Otherwise, we have to take into account that they have different velocities. So if A is equal to 4 pi squared over T squared times R, and 4 pi squared over T squared is just a constant, that means that A is proportional to R, which implies that our ratio AP over AQ should be equal to RP all over RQ. And RP is half as much as RQ. So we're going to get an answer of one half here. So no muss, no fuss, quick and easy if we use the ratio proportionality equation. Here's a second question asking, how many times more luminous than the sun is a star that is twice as massive as the sun? So you probably haven't studied astrophysics yet. But if you go to the data booklet, you'll find that there is a relationship between luminosity and mass of a star. And they don't give you an equation. They just say that it's a proportional relationship between L, the luminosity, and mass to the power 3.5. So we can write a ratio proportionality equation. We can say that L of this star divided by L of the sun will be equal to the mass of the star divided by the mass of the sun raised to the 3.5. And we know that that mass ratio is 2. So we plug into our calculator 2 to the power 3.5 and we get 11.3, which is to say that the star is 11.3 times as luminous as the sun. Here's a question that gave students a lot of problems, but it shouldn't have been a problem if they knew about ratio proportionality equations. So pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So we realize this is an ideal gas law problem, and our ideal gas law equation is PV equals nRT. Now, we're dealing with masses here, and mass is not in that equation. But the number of moles has to be proportional to the mass. The more particles you have, the more mass you have. So we can write here that PV must be proportional to mass, well R is just a constant, mass times temperature. So mass would be proportional, just bringing things to the other side of the equation, would be proportional to PV over T. So that means that mass of P divided by mass of Q must be equal to P 
at P, V at P over T at P, all divided by, well, I'm going to invert and multiply. So I'll get a TQ all over PQ, VQ. And then let's see what ratios we know. P is held at a temperature of 200 and Q is at 400. So we can write here that TQ over TP will be 400 over 200, or just two. We also know that the volume of P is twice the volume of Q. So VP all over VQ would be two to one. We also know that we have this open connection between P and Q, and that means they have to go to the same pressure which means that the two pressures are constant and they're going to cancel out. So we're going to get 800 divided by 200. We're going to get a ratio of 4. And the correct answer is C. Here's a type of question that was very poorly done on exams. And I'm not even going to teach you the physics here. I'm just going to give you the equation and tell you what the symbols mean. R here is, of course, the radius of a nucleus. R0 is called the Fermi constant, but for us, we just need to know that it's a constant. It doesn't change. And then A here is the mass number. So if R is equal to R0, A to the one-third, rate of proportionality equation and solve the problem. Pause the video, try it, come back for the answer. Okay, so what we can say here is that R is proportional to, and we can eliminate R0 because that's a constant, it's proportional to A to the one-third power, which means that R of B all over R of A must be equal to A of B all over A of A to the one-third power. A of B, the mass number of B is 99, mass number of A is 32, raise that to the one-third, and RB is what we're solving for. RA is equal to 7.0 times 10 to the minus 15. So we can solve, and we should get that Rb is about 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 meters. So easy problem to do if you understand ratio proportionality equations. You don't even need to know the physics. Here's a question from astrophysics, but you really don't need a background in astrophysics to do this question. You really just need to understand ratios and proportions. So what we're asked for is the density of star X, density of star X divided by the density of star Y. And of course, density is just mass over volume. So this would be the mass of star X over the volume of star X, all divided by the mass of star Y divided by the volume of star Y. Now to divide fractions, we invert and multiply. So we're going to get mx over vx times vy over my. And we'd probably rate that in terms of the mass ratios and the volume ratios, as in mx over my times vy all over vx. And now when we look at our graph, we look to see if we can get a mass ratio or a volume ratio, and we can't directly. We do get ratios for radius and for luminosity. This L here stands for luminosity. So what we really need is relationships between luminosity and mass and radius and volume. That is the volume of a star, if it's spherical, and it will be, will be 4 thirds pi r cubed. 4 thirds pi, that's just a constant, so that means that volume is proportional to r cubed. And that means that 
the volume of y divided by the volume of x has to equal the radius of y over the radius of x all cubed. And the radius of star y is 0.1r. The radius of star x is 10r. So this is going to equal 0.1r divided by 10r all cubed. And that will come out to be 10 to the minus 6. The other important rate the other important relationship we're given is this proportionality relationship between the luminosity and the mass. So luminosity is proportional to mass to the power 3.5. So we would like to get this ratio mass of x to max, mass of y, mx over my. That raised to the 3.5 should be equal to lx all over ly. And what I can do here is raise both sides to the 1 over 3.5. Because that's going to isolate that ratio mx over my. Because these two multiply together to give 1. And that's going to be equal to lx all over ly all to the 1 over 3.5. So my mx over my will be equal to lx. lx is 10 to the fourth over ly, which is 10 to the minus 3, all raised to the 1 over 3.5. And if you plug that into your calculator, you get an answer there of 100. So now I can come back to this expression and say that px over py will be equal to mx over my, which is 100, times vy over vx, and that's equal to 10 to the minus 6. So I end up with a ratio for the densities of 10 to the minus 4. So let's try to summarize this process by writing an algorithm for using these ratio proportionality equations. So the first step in the algorithm would be to find a formula that relates the variables given in the problem. So let's suppose it was the ideal gas law. So our equation was PV equals nRT. So we've identified our equation. Then what we need to do is, if needed, Rearrange that equation for the variable in the ratio asked for in the problem. So maybe they were asking for the ratio of the volumes for two different situations. So then you could write that V is equal to nRT all over pressure. Third step would be to eliminate all constants and rate of proportionality. So let's suppose it was given in the problem that the temperature was constant R, of course, is a universal constant, so we would say that V is proportional to the number of moles divided by the pressure. Step four would be to rate your ratio equation and solve. So that would mean that the volume in state one divided by the volume in state two would be equal to the number of moles in state one divided by the number of moles in state two all divided by the pressure in state 1 divided by the pressure in state 2. And of course, when we divide, we invert and multiply. So this would become N1 over N2 times P2 all over P1. So if you've been given those ratios in the problem, you're going to be able to solve for the volume ratio. So please take the time to become a subscriber, or sign up for notifications, become a member, become a Patreon, make some comments, ask some questions. Any of your participation is greatly appreciated. Thank you. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.